Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking. The figure of the knight no longer belongs to history books and documentaries alone. The entertainment industry has claimed the knights and we can now find them in fantasy novels, movies and video games. Fantasy lore has lots of different variations, from knights wielding magical weapons and wearing magical armor, to knights using magic and casting spells like wizards, all the way to the holy orders who lose the ability to utilize their powerful divine weapons if they sin. Well played, Oblivion. But as the creativity of plot writers expands, it also collides with the demands and expectations of their 21st century audience, which ends up creating characters such as Sir Brienne of Tarth, who is a female knight of House Tarth the first woman of the Seven Kingdoms, to become a knight. And this is not the only case in which we see a female character playing the role of a knight. See the video game Final Fantasy Tactics, for example. One of my old favourites, which allows you to choose the job knight regardless of the gender. And the same happens in most modern role-playing games. Then again, the concept of female knight within a fantasy world such as that of Game of Thrones is absolutely fine. And I myself loved having both male and female knights in Final Fantasy Tactics, for instance. But for us who like learning about history, this begs the question, did female knights exist? How strange of a concept would that have been in the medieval period? What would medieval people think if they could see a modern medieval games full of lady knights? Well, before learning the medieval perspective on the matter, we should first establish if the idea of a woman knight is feasible in our world. My girlfriend has agreed to help us out visualize what we are talking about. She's going to wear some medieval clothing and some armor for us. So thank you, Kenzie. By the way, she has a YouTube channel of her own, and we've even made a video collaboration together once. If you want to see me fail miserably at trying to put makeup on her, you'll find a link in the description below. It's really funny. She has almost reached the milestone of 1,000 subscribers. She's been working really hard for it. So if you want to help her out, go subscribe and say hello from the community of Noble Ones. I would really appreciate it. So can a woman wear armor? Can a girl effectively wear a full suit of armor usually intended for men? And can she fight effectively on the battlefield or in a duel wearing armor? Well, the answer to that is quite simple. It very much would depend on the girl, but generally speaking, a woman can wear an armor just as much as a man can wear an armor. Because the main thing that we need to remember about armor is that armor is going to be tailored specifically for the person who is wearing it. So, of course, if you have a girl who is smaller, for example, and thinner waisted than a man, then of course the armor she's going to wear is going to require less metal to cover her entire body, hence the ultimately well-tailored armor that she's going to wear, it is going to wear less than the armor needed to clad a big guy in full armor, simply because she's going to need less metal to have the same amount of overall protection. So yes, armor can be worn by women as effectively as it can be worn by men. The only real difference is going to be the level of training. Now, from a medieval perspective, and this is where history comes in, usually it was men that were training uh, in combat not women. So of course if you take a trained man who has been wearing armor for many years and then you compare his effectiveness on in, in fighting compared to a woman who has never trained and is, and is wearing a well tailored armor for the first time then of course the performance is going to be completely different. But it's not a biological differentiation, it's a cultural differentiation. If you can have a woman for whatever reason in a different society, and this is why we're exploring fantasy in this case, whereby women uh, were brought up to fight since they were seven, similarly to what happened with aristocratic knights, then yes, a woman who has been training, a girl who has been training for a few years and has got a well made suit of armor, whether it be male or whether it be plate, she could be very effective on a battlefield. Now given, as I have explained in my dedicated video, Women Warriors, Why Warriors Were Mostly Men, uh, there is a real, tangible and scientific disadvantage that women have in combat against men. And to be honest, I don't care if this offends people, because it's the reality, it's the truth. It's called sexual dimorphism, and it's the actual difference in body size and general muscle and strength between the sexes. And when we speak on average, men are stronger than women. 
and also they have a higher tendency probably due to testosterone and other things and other chemicals in our bodies we have a, a tendency to want to fight more than women do there are of course exceptions to this rule this is obvious say me uh, i'm just an average guy you'd put me against an mma girl who's been training her whole life and is particularly strong she's going to kick the trash out of me but then again that's the exception so generally speaking in terms of sustaining the weight of armor that's not a problem. In fact, here my girlfriend is wearing my uh, Roman set of armor. The whole kit is about, I want to say, 10 kilograms in weight, and she wears it no problem. And if the kit was specifically tailored for her, she could wear it even for longer. It's proven women can wear armor. That was not the problem. Now, talking about actual fighting, men and women both can fight. Now, of course, if we are dealing with hand-to-hand -hand combat, then again, usually men will have an advantage sometimes even significant against women but when weapons come into the equation then the situation changes because if you give a weapon to a girl and the guy doesn't have a weapon now the girl even if she's smaller uh, has a huge advantage over the guy this is an equalizer and when you have a guy who is trained and a girl who is trained they're both trained in for example HEMA historical European martial arts and they both have weapons then it's going to be a matter of technique rather than genders as you can clearly see on this video that I've shot the swordsman on the right is a woman and she's fighting exceptionally well So having established this, it's not that women couldn't physically be knights, it's that within the medieval culture, mostly of Europe because knights were only European, in the medieval culture it would be abhorrent to see a woman become a knight, simply because a knight is a masculine figure. In history we have had women with power, say for example all the English queens. Now having power and titles of course doesn't make you a knight. However, we have had women in history who supposedly wore armor and participated the battles, such as for example the very famous Joan of Arc. Now, I'd like to underline, whenever uh, all the pictures that I'm showing now, yes she's wearing full plate armor, but these are not period pictures. Or representations these were made afterwards we don't really have any representation any period representation when she was alive that represents her in armor but we do have historical accounts that say that she participated into battles and that she was wearing armor so we can believe that that's probably what happened I mean if you put her there not to fight really because Joan of Arc didn't really see any fighting but you put her there to inspire men with the idea of we have got the miracle girl have faith, Christian soldiers, go ahead and fight for her, which is basically what they did with her. If she's on the battlefield, she's going to need armor, otherwise she's going to go down really easily. So, yes, I, I do believe that she wore full plate armor, as the representations show. So, she sort of defied the medieval perspective of things. She was wearing armor, she was doing something that is usually done by men, going to war, wearing full plate. And yes, they allowed her to do that, they in fact encouraged her to do it, until they changed their mind and burnt her at the stake. So the church still burnt her at the stake. Yes, subsequently they will make her into a saint, but they never gave her knighthood, I'd like to underline. The idea of a woman being a knight or doing things that we were usually done by knights is very much something that didn't happen in the Middle Ages. There are some very few exceptions, like I say Joan of Arc, there are other exceptions. Supposedly at the very beginning of the Templar Order, women were also allowed to be part of the Order, and in the Teutonic Order, again, women could be part of the Order, although again, not as knights, but usually as sisters, performing other duties. So as a woman, depending on when in history and where, you could be part of a knightly order, but that didn't mean that you were a knight. Another exception worth of mentioning is of course the order of the Achet, for founded in 1149, which was an honorific order for women, and it happened in a very very special context in which Muslim forces attacked the city of Tortosa that was attacked because most men were going out to fight in other places so the Muslims decided to take advantage of that and Islamic forces invaded and started sieging the city and since only women basically were left they dressed up like men and fought the invaders off and apparently they managed. Count Ramon Berenguer again allegedly gave them this honor and created this order which gave them some special rights like tax exemption and the right to 
keep the jewelry and possessions of their husbands once they would become widows so yes these women did get an honorific title but were they knights in my opinion no because again the idea of a knight is a very special one and sometimes it's misleading because whenever you see imagery of men fighting in full plate armor even if it's men it doesn't mean that they're knights and to be a knight you need to have a title many representations of men in full plate the fight in the manner of the knight even though they might look like knights they're men at arms so professional fighters without the title for a woman it would be almost impossible i'm gonna put it i'm not gonna say 100 impossible because if you're doing history you can't really speak in absolutes you always have to leave a a window for something that can be discovered we don't know but generally speaking from a medieval perspective women knights no but you would have dames all right noble ones well i hope that you enjoyed this video if you did please remember thumbs up and if you're yet not members of this community become a noble one subscribe to my channel for more content from the metatron and remember the metatron has spread his wings goodbye thank you for watching